Uh, hello and welcome to another video in this series of how to do things in Fantasy Grounds Unity. And in this video we're going to look at how you set up the fighters fighting styles. Uh, now all of the information uh, in this video is quite appropriate to Fantasy Games cl Classic as well. It's not just a Unity thing, but since there are lots of new users who only know Unity and haven't used Classic, I'm justifying this uh, for a video specifically about Unity. And it's probably about the third most asked question that I see on Discord. So there you go. I'm cheating, um, but there you have it. Uh, so we've got uh, our fighter here, we've got uh, Braun the Resilient um, and we have set him up, he's just a level 1 and we've uh, added a bunch of weapons into his inventory uh, just for uh, so that we can illustrate all of this and we're going to concentrate on his ability here, the fighting style so we're going to open that up first of all uh, then we're going to switch to our actions tab and what we're now going to do is I'm going to just drag this into the uh, uh, power into the uh, action tab here and this is going to set up a power group and um, now <coughs> I like doing this for all of these kind of abilities because uh, it means that uh, you've got this link here which you can readily click uh, and you can open up to read all about the abilities um, once you've made your choice of which fighting style you have you can go back if you like to the abilities tab here and you can uh, just edit this uh, to include whichever uh, fighting style you chose. Um, but that isn't strictly necessary um, because we're going to be setting up this power group here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click into this box here and we're going to call this uh, class features. You can call it anything you like um, and once you tab out you'll see that the power group now has uh, that name and therefore it keeps everything nice and neat on the actions tab. So let's look at the first uh, fighting style, uh, archery. Um, Bron has got a short bow here. So we're going to set up um, a bonus for uh, of a plus two every time he makes an attack with a ranged weapon. So we're going to do this via an effect. There's two methods to do it, but I'll show you the method that I think is the best in this case. Um, we're going to right click over this line here. We're going to go to add action and then we're going to add effect. And then we're going to click on this little magnifying glass to open up the effects dialog. Uh, we can make this a description, uh, archery, uh, end it with a semicolon, and then we're going to, going to put ATK, a colon, and then we're going to add in the 2, which is the bonus. Uh, we're going to make a comma there, and then we're going to add in the word ranged. We are not going to bother with a duration because this lasts forever. We're going to set the targeting to self by clicking on this box here and the expend we're going to leave at never. So what you've got here now is an effect um, which if uh, once Braun is on the combat tracker we click this little running man icon here is going to place this effect on Braun in the combat tracker and it will basically stay there forever until we uh, remove it. Uh, so let's test this out then. Uh, let's get Braun onto the uh, combat tracker. We'll open up our combat tracker. We've got a couple of monsters here already. Uh, drag him in. Uh, we'll make it Braun's turn. He, he's going to apply the effect to himself. As you can see, there is now an effect here uh, which has been added. Uh, we're going to uh, target uh, this bugbear here and then we're going to make a short bow attack against that uh, bugbear. And down here we can see that his short bow um, had an effect of plus two. Um, he has a plus three normally, but uh, you can see here he's getting a plus five. This effect has been added in. Um, now if we um, just uh, equip the uh, long sword uh, here, again, um, and if we just make an attack with the long sword against the bugbear here, uh, we'll see that we don't get the plus two because the long sword is a melee weapon. Um, so we're only getting that plus two with the ranged attacks um, and, and not a melee attacks. So that's what the, the ranged modifier is doing here. So this I think is the best way to do this because uh, any kind of uh, ranged attack that Bron makes will get this plus two bonus. We could, uh, if we wanted to, click on this little 
um, symbol here against the short bow and we could add uh, the bonus uh, into this box here for the uh, sorry not the damage for the attack we could um, add the plus two bonus in there but you would have to do that then for every ranged weapon that Bronn came across um, and you know, that's, you like to forget that or whatever um, so I think it's a lot neater just to uh, prepare this uh, effect here and then it's on and it'll work for any ranged attack. Uh, right, let's look at the next one then. Defense, while you're wearing armor, you gain a plus one bonus to AC. There are again two ways to do this. Um, the first method is exactly the same as this one. You right click over here, uh, add action, add effect, click the magnifying glass. And then uh, in here, we can just give it a descriptor, um, a semicolon, and then AC. A, C, colon, 1. We set the targets again to self and the expend to never and leave the duration uh, blank. And again, this is because this effect will always be on him uh, provided he's not wearing, uh, uh, whilst he's wearing armor, he gets this plus one bonus. So once again, we can get rid of this. Uh, we can actually remove this uh, effect here and we can place this uh, effect onto Bronn. We see now that the effect is now on the combat tracker. And if we skip round to one of the bugbears here, and if the bugbear makes an attack against Bronn, uh, we can see uh, here that the uh, defense effects were added in. So the plus one has been added in to uh, Bronn's uh, AC before this calculation uh, was made to see whether it hit or not. In this case, it didn't make any difference. The bugbear hit anyway, um, but the plus one is being added in there. There is another way to do this. If we go to the main tab and then click on this little magnifying glass here, we can add in the uh, bonus to the armor in this box here. Um, and again, uh, this is uh, permanent. This one's actually okay to put the miscellaneous bonus in there if you like. Um, it, it doesn't really make uh, an awful lot of difference in this case, um, but again I like to see it on the actions tab and we know what it is and we know why there is a 1 in there. If we just shove it in this box here um, then we don't know what it's for really, we might forget. So um, with the effect on the combat tracker all the time we know exactly what it's for. Uh, so on to the third one, uh, dueling. Uh, while you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapon, you get a two uh, bonus to damage rolls with that weapon. Uh, so let's supposing he's got his uh, longsword here and this is the only weapon that he's got. And again, we're just going to do the same kind of thing. We're going to create an effect for this. We're going to add action. We're going to add effect. We're going to click on this button and we're going to call this dueling. We have our semicolon. Uh, we're going to add in the descriptor, uh, the keyword, which is damage, uh, and then it's two, and then comma melee. Uh, we're going to set the targets to self. We're going to leave the duration and uh, the expend to never. Pretty much the same kind of thing as the archery one, only this one is only going to do uh, uh, two points of extra damage if. Uh, Bronn makes a melee attack and this will work for any melee attack that uh, Bronn makes. Uh, so if we make it uh, Bronn's turn and he, supposing he's hit bugbear number one and he's now ready to damage him, if we drag our longsword damage on um, and we forgot to put the effect on, so let's start that again and actually put the effect on. Uh, so uh, let's start again. Bronn makes the longsword attack. And we can see in this case that uh, again the effect plus two has been added into the damage here. He would normally have a 1d8 plus two. Uh, uh, the effect is adding in another two points so he's getting a d8 plus four. Uh, if we make the uh, damage roll with the uh, short bow onto the bugbear we can see that he doesn't get the plus two because we've limited it to melee attacks only. Now again, um, we can do this another way. We can just go into the longsword here and we can add the uh, bonus uh, damage down in this area down here. Um, but uh, again, we would need to do that for every melee weapon. 
uh, this is a nice cleaner uh, method of dealing with it uh, in my view. Uh, moving on to the next one then, uh, great weapon fighting, uh, you roll a 1 or a 2 on damage, must be a two-handed weapon, blah blah. Uh, so if we go to uh, the uh, preparation mode here, and just uh, give him that one, we'll take the other ones off. Uh, he now has a great sword which fulfills all the conditions. Uh, this one here we can't set up an effect, but so we have to actually go into the uh, great sword itself. We click on this little magnifying glass, we come to the weapon properties here, we add a comma, and then we uh, add in re-roll 2, just like that. Uh, we can close that off now, and if Bronn now makes uh, some damage uh, to one of these bugbears with his uh, great sword, uh, we can see uh, here in the uh, chat box that there was a re-roll uh, that was uh, that uh, in fact there was two re-rolls. He rolled a one and a two initially, um, and dice number one came up with a one. Dice number two came up with a one, and so both were re-rolled, and he got a five and a four instead of uh, two ones. Um, so that th this one has to be in the weapon properties. We have no choice here. And obviously it'll need to be added into any weapon which qualifies um, for this particular um, uh, fighting style. Uh, and the next one, protection. Um, so when a creature attacks you within five feet and it's, you're not the target, you can impose disadvantage on the attack roll. Um, this is going to be another effect here, so we're going to right click again. We're going to add action, we're going to add effect. We're going to click on the little magnifying glass, and this time uh, we can call this protection if we want. Uh, we've got our semicolon, and we are just going to put in the keyword, which is this attack, and that's it. Uh, this time um, we're going to leave the targeting at targets, and the expend we're going to change that to on next action, because it's only the disadvantage is only on this attack roll. Uh, that the enemy is going to make. Um, so for this one, um, it, br uh, the bugbear has attacked, uh, let's say, an ally of Bronn. So what uh, Bronn's going to do is he's going to take this effect here and he's going to drag it and drop it uh, onto the uh, enemy that's making the attack. And if we zip round to uh, bugbear 2's turn, when he makes his attack, uh, we'll just make it against Bronn, but this isn't right, it would have to be against an ally, but just for illustrative purposes. Uh, so as you can see, the uh, enemy rolled two dice with disadvantage um, and rolled an 8 instead of the uh, 19 uh, that he rolled with the other dice. So that's imposed disadvantage on the attack against that bugbear, and you'll see there that the effect uh, which was on the bugbear uh, was immediately removed uh, on the bugbear's action. Uh, and then we come down to the last one, when you engage in two weapon fighting you can add your ability modifier to the damage of the second attack. Uh, let's go into preparation mode here and get rid of the greatsword. Uh, we're going to add in the dagger and the short sword because these are two light weapons. Um, oh, we didn't... Uh, right. We just made them carried rather than uh, think. Now, in actual fact, uh, you don't really need to do anything for this because normally, um, if you are engaging in two weapon fighting and you don't have this fighting style, then you don't get uh, your uh, ability modifier to the damage for the second attack. So if we were making uh, the dagger here our offhand attack, and we would just change the name there just to show that this is the offhand attack. Normally we would have to go into this magnifying glass here and we would have to uh, remove uh, the uh, bonus uh, that uh, he would get for the uh, damage. Uh, so uh, we would just go through this here until it was blank. Quite a few options. There we go. And this would be the normal thing that you would have with an offhand weapon. You wouldn't actually get your um, ability modifier onto the damage. 
Um, but because of this fighting style you do, and uh, because this is a melee weapon, then the uh, stat is strength. So we just click until it goes to base, which means strength, because Fantasy Grounds knows that a melee weapon is based on strength, so base to strength. Um, you can change that to strength if you like, but base is fine, because Fantasy Ground does all that for you. And so we get the actual... Uh, bonus for the uh, strength and the damage. So for this particular one you really don't need to do anything except just designate one of the weapons as the offhand weapon so that you know that this is going to be the offhand attack and this is going to be the main hand attack. Um, so that's it I think. Um, uh, cheating or not, uh, that's the fighting styles for uh, the fighter and we shall see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.